Hello, this is Roberta Denny. I'd like to introduce myself and um, want to start off by thanking Suzanne and the IPAD organization for inviting me uh, to do a demonstration. And so what I'll be demonstrating today is fish scales on porcelain. Um, and a um, little bit about myself, just to give a little introduction. I've been painting since about 1985. Um, I enjoy painting a lot of different subjects, um, whether they're flowers, birds. I like a lot of different techniques. That's how I got into doing uh, the fish scales. Um, another uh, type of painting I love to do is chintz, if you're familiar with that. That's very, um, a lot of flowers. And this first piece that I'm going to share with you as far as an example for the fish scales also has the chintz on it. So um, Anyway, I retired five years ago and have been having a lot of fun doing painting, have lots of time to do it. So again, thank you. And let me go ahead and get started. So I'm going to switch over to my desk camera so that you can see some of the artwork and you'll get a closer look at what I'm doing. Okay, so um, I wanna start by just showing you what the fish scales are and some applications, how you might use them in your design work. Um, how it, um, different things you can do with it, different colors, different um, aspect as far as the emphasis of it, that type of thing. So here, this is a piece um, that, of chintz that I did the fish scales on the outside, you can see in the purple. And this is a piece that the fish scales are really just enhancing it, gives it some color, but then main subject definitely is still the chintz. Another sample that I have here, and by the way, these are uh, copies because um, most of these pieces that I'm showing you here are ones that have been either donated for an auction, uh, gifts, sold, that sort of thing. So I don't have them in my possession anymore, but I do have some that I definitely will show you that I, I have the porcelain here still. So here again is another example, a Dresden box, and I've applied the fish scales on the outside. You can see sometimes the fish scales are used just to give it color. If I had made this a solid green, it would have been pretty, but I think this gives it even more interest to um, give it the um, fish scale result. Now this piece is very large. It's a two foot vase. Uh, you can see I put the fish scale design down on the bottom, around the top and the middle here. And I even did it down the center, now the, down the neck of it looking down the top. Um, that was a major um, task to do as far as the fact that if you'll notice with the flute, the top of the vase, it's a lot wider as you get down to the smaller uh, neck of it, the fish scales get smaller also. So you have to take that in consideration as you're designing and doing your fish scales. And this is the last one um, that I have a picture of. And I wanted to show this because it's a little bit of a different effect. I was following more of the design of the plate, the relief work that was on it and enhancing that um, rather than the other ones I've been showing you are more um, confined or square rectangular areas. This was a little bit more free form and I further embellished it with the gold work, um, but just a different way to look at. And I'll show you a little later on some of the um, pieces from the Meissen factory, uh, they they tend to go more along this line where it's um, not a main portion of the painting, but a minor enhancement type approach. So another pink one that I've painted is on this little box. Um, again, it's one that really filled the lid, but it made it I believe more interesting and um, just fills in lots of color for the piece. This is another piece that the, the fish scales in this case are really being used more as a frame for the piece. So this is a little bit different than the other ones I was showing you. Um, also, another difference is the size, and I'll show you as we go through how to do the fish scales that you can adjust the size. And just as a comparison, for instance, you can see how much larger the um, ones on this plate are com as compared to the lid here. So I want to bring that forward because I want you to think about as you think about designing um, 
how dainty do you want it? How, what color do you want it? How big, how far apart, that type of thing. Because those are all things that you can adjust in doing this technique. Okay, so here's an interesting plate in the sense of how it came about. Um, the rose is just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I did not paint it. I want to give um, the credit to that to Deanna Monroy. She did the painting on it. And what happened is we had invited her to one of our club meetings to paint roses. So she got all set up, ready to do the, the, the demo and realized she had not brought the porcelain. She didn't have anything to paint on. Well, I was doing fish scales. I had this plate out in the car that already had the pink border on it. So I ran out, got it and said, here we go. We can paint on this if you'd like to do that. She said, of course. So she made it pink, matched the paint that um, I'd already put on there. And um, it, it to me, it turned out to be a perfect design unplanned initially. I ended up adding the gold to it until we got our finished piece here. So thank you, De Diana. It, it um, really resulted in a nice piece, I think. But this was part of a series that I had started. And this is what I want to demonstrate for you today of how to make the um, fish scales on a piece similar to this. So I started with this one. I, I like the purple, picked the color, made it with violets. And I thought, well, that's nice, but you know, it'd be really nice to do another color as well. I'd like to have a set. So I proceeded to do a pink one as well. Of course, I had to pick a different flower. So I went with the rose. And then from there it was, well, I would like to have my friends over. I want to use these. I don't use that much of my porcelain. And I thought this one, I purposely left the center unpainted. It's good for putting food on, a little luncheon plate, that sort of thing. But I have several girlfriends that I wanted to invite over and wanted to use the plates. So I decided to go with different colors. So now I went with another yellow and a green one and this was fun to think of what color do i want to put what color what kind of flower do i want to put with each of these colors uh, so i had a purple pink yellow or gold if you want to call it that and green i thought well geez i don't have blue blue has to be in there somewhere right and i just really liked this teal color as well so i did the icelandic copies. And the last one, which I never finished purposely because I want to use it for demonstration purposes, was the blue with the forget-me-nots. So that was my series. My friends come over. I let them pick whatever color they would like. Now, these are a little different from a design perspective. I wanted the uh, fish scales to be very um, prominent in the design. They weren't just an add-on or a, a, a minor portion of the design. I wanted them to stand out as a significant part of the design. So that's why you're seeing much more on the edges and um, a little bit more obvious of a effect for the plate. So with that, that's the introduction of what the fish scales are and how I've applied it to different designs, different sizes, different colors, different pieces. You know, I have everything from the large vase plates, the little um, jar. And um, so, you know, it, it's, don't limit yourself as you think about perhaps wanting to add fish scales to some of your porcelain. Okay, so I am going to use this piece now for demonstrating purposes. And I've broken down the process into four steps. The first step is shown here on this plate. And really what it is, is giving yourself some guidelines that you can use to get the fish scales very uniform. They, you want to make them all the same height. You want to make them the same width. You want it to be very uniform so your eye is not drawn to any place in particular. And so I will go through the process to show you how to create the guidelines that you need for what you'll be um, painting. Uh, then the Actually, the first fire that you would do, which would be the second step of the four step process, is the pen work. And that's shown in this area right here. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see it better. So this would be 
you, you do your guidelines. That's the first step. The second step is doing the pen work. The third step is some brush work, which further develops the design. And then the last step is actually putting a wash of just a blue paint over it. And that's those are the major steps that you'd use, whether, whether you did this project or any other project, any of the projects that I just showed you, you can still follow these steps. So with that, let me start with how to do this design, the guideline. Okay, so these are the tools, some of the tools that you would need in order to do that. And I'm gonna actually do it for you on this plate to show you. It might look complicated initially, but it's really not. Trust me, it's it's pretty straightforward. What we do to prepare the plate is we need to have the six rings. Now those rings define the height. They will define the height of each of the, I call them the scallops or the fish scales. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five rows in this particular plate of fish scales. And the height of those fish scales is defined by the height of these rings. So that's the first step of what we will do. And you might say, well, you know, how am I going to get even rings like that? And how do I know how far apart the rings are? For this particular design, and this can change, this is where you can make your design specific for your piece. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller. In this case, they were 3 16th of an inch. And so I am going to just start by marking my plate with the 3 16th of an inch so that I know how, what spacing there will be between each of the individual rows. So 3 16th, there's one, Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's that's how wide each row will be. I just I just ticked it off so that I know what that measurement will be. So the best way, if you are fortunate enough to have a banding wheel, that actually is the um, easiest and the best way to do the banding. And let me show you what one looks like. I do have uh, the rather large. Um, you can see it has a wheel. This happens to be a self-aligning wheel, meaning that um, by adjusting the plates on this wheel, it will center your plate. The armrest here is also adjustable. You can make it go up and down. You can you know, go back and forth with it, angle it differently. So I consider this kind of the Cadillac of banding wheels. If you happen to have one of these, um, you're very fortunate. If you see one, I would recommend you go ahead and pick it up, buy it if you can. However, I know many of you don't have one and I don't want this to be a reason that you don't do fish scales. So, we are going to make our own banding wheel uh, because really all you need is a turntable and these you can get everywhere. I mean, you can buy them on Amazon if you want. Um, you can buy them at uh, Blick, you know, the art store, they have them. Uh, ceramic stores will carry them. And it's, it's not any particular kind, just one that will spin any you know standard turntable. So we need that, and then you need an armrest. Well, I made my own armrest. This is paint boxes. It's got my paints in it, my china paints. And I just taped it together. And what you want to do is have it be a little higher than the uh, turntable. So let me go back to my other screen here and show you what we've got here. All right. So now it's it's really, it's gonna work just the same as the other banding wheel that I just showed you. So we're gonna go ahead and line those up and you put your plate on here. 
Now the difference is I need to get this plate centered. That's the one thing that is different between the two banding wheels, but this will work too. Okay, so how do I know it's centered? You can see my pen right on the edge of the plate here. I'm gonna zoom in a little more so you can see it very carefully. I'm gonna spin it and watch that to see if it, see how that goes way off the plate. We need to pull that over a little bit. And I'm gonna do several of these adjustments until it's centered. Yeah, we're already getting pretty close, very close. Okay, so I'm pretty centered now. So what you want to do is rest your hand. That's why we've got this arm rest, so that you don't move your hand. All the movement is done in the turntable. I'm going to put it on this first line, and then I'm going to turn. There we go. I'm not move my hand, and I'm coming back to my beginning spot. So there's one. Go to my next one. There's two, the next one, three. And I might have given myself one more than I really needed. Okay, so that's how you do your lines. Um, there's also a couple of other tools that you can do. Um, I wanted to give you several options of how you can get these lines, because this is real important. The better you do your lines, the more accurate and even your fish scales will be. So another tool that you can use is very simply this little, it's called a metal lining guide. And the way it works is you can see it's got this little lip on the, let me zoom in so you can see that better. It's got this little lip that hangs on to the edge of your plate. It's got all these little holes in it. So you put your pen in the hole that you want for the distance where you, the line is that you want to capture. I'm doing a different color so you can see it. And should be about right there. And then you just pull it around. See the blue line? Look how nice that works as well. Let me do it again where you can see it better. Okay, so you just put in that hole. I'm pulling down on it so it's grabbing on the edge of the plate, and then you just go around the plate, and it'll give you those lines as well. There's a lot of holes here, so you can get into the other uh, holes to get further down the plate. So this is called a metal lining guide. And then the other thing that I came across that I've not used it, but I thought it looked like a very good banding tool as well. And this one has a similar concept in that it grabs on the edge of the plate and you, you, you know, pull it around the edge of the plate to guide it for the, uh, the line there, but it also has a pen holder. So I found that very interesting. I'd like to try it. It looks like it would adjust like the pin. You can pull it in or out, which you'd have to do in order to put a different line, uh, different lines in it. And um, anyway, it looks like another one that would work quite well. So you might ask, well, you know, where do I find these products? I do have, I'll show this again at the end. I do have a supply list of some recommendations of where you might be able to find some of the um, products I just showed you. Um, as I mentioned with the turntable, you can get those a lot of different places. The Kugelmeyers over in Germany also carry what looks like a very nice turntable. Uh, the banding tool that I just showed you, this one here, this is Dallas, China. And the little metal liner, this here is, I found them at DBA Originals and also Kugelmeyer. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna use a plate divider. And I've seen those at Campana Art Company and DBA Originals as well. 
So why do I need a plate divider and how do we use that? Well, the next step in getting our guidelines, we've got our plate with all the rings on it, but now we need to get vertical lines. And why do we need the vertical lines? Because now we'll be, we'll be doing fish scales and we only need to do six in each section. Whereas if I didn't have these sections, I would be doing 24 all the way across there and you won't get them even. The smaller quantity that you can do, the more accurate and even you'll make them. And it'll come become more evident with you when I actually um, do it for you. But so how do we get this? And for this particular design, for this particular pattern, we need 24 of them. So for that, I go to the plate divider. Okay, so how do we use a plate divider? The plate divider, before I put the plate on, is divided into various sections. You can see these numbers. Let me get it in there. So at this starting point is right here, but there's numbers over here, 16, 15, 14, 13. There's a number on each one of these lines. Whatever that number is, if you pick out that 16 here, there's another 16 over here, and you keep going around, here's another 16, et cetera, there will be 16 of them. So if the number 16 and you hit each of those numbers, that'll be 16 even divisions around your plate. Uh, 15, you'll get 15 divisions. In this case, we're gonna use the 12. So I'm gonna start with putting 12 even divisions around the plate. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So we put our plate on, I need to center it. And I'm just looking at the rings, getting it uh, about three divisions down is centered. There we go, all the way around. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. I'm gonna zoom in just on the startup here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to mark the 12s. I'm gonna start here and here's a 12 right here. So that gets a mark. There's a 12 here. And you just keep going around, getting all of the marks, you zoom out. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. I'm just hitting all of the 12s. Here's another 12. Now we're gonna need 24 of these and you're probably wondering, well, this only goes up to 16 is the max. And I'm only doing 12 right now. Well, I'm gonna do 12 more. And I am going to spin my plate around to where, here's two of my marks here and here. Right here and here, I'm going to put this starting point in the middle of those two. So it's dividing this, these 12 sections each get divided in half again. So I'm gonna hit the 12s all the way around. So now that one section becomes two. And so I'm getting twice as many sections, which will in the end give me the 24 that I need. So almost done. This might seem like it's a lot of work. It might take a lot of time, but really it's only about 15, 20 minutes of your time, which will be well worth it in the end. So hopefully you can see the marks. I've got 24 marks now, and those are all even spaces on my piece. And so now, I need to pull a few of those around so you can see them on the front. So this is just a matter of marking a few of them. I'm just bring the mark around to the front of the plate. Okay.
Now I'm going to use the flexible ruler and I need to actually put the vertical line in. And if I look at, I've got a mark here, the one directly across from it is over here. If I line those two up, I know my ruler is straight. And so you're going to go around and mark these like this. Almost there. And one more. Okay, so now we've got our twenty four even sections and our rows that are also even as well. The only thing left to do is to mark where this area is that the uh, flowers are painted for this particular design. And there's just this little arc, this little curve for the edge of that. And I literally took the lid of one of my jars that has paint in it, something curved like this, and used it just to get a curved edge and literally just use it to give me that edge and count one, two, three, four, where another one goes. Then we're gonna put the fish scales in this area and this would be an area for flowers. One, two, three, four. The fish scales, flowers, four. And I'm going to take a little denatured alcohol just so you can see it to clean out the area where the flowers will be painted. And this plate would be ready to actually start doing fish scales. So, like I said, it, it might seem like a lot of work, but doesn't take that long and it's so well worth it. By the way, um, these um, Sharpies, I'm using a, a kind of a dark blue Sharpie. Normally for my piece, I would actually use a lighter blue. It's just a little less distracting when you're painting. I chose a darker color so you could see it in the demonstration here. Um, but with firing, the Sharpies will fire out. I do recommend, however, using a blue. Um, I have on occasion seen a red or a green do a little bit of etching. One time I saw a very, very heavy application of a black one that didn't fire out totally. It was done on top of a luster area. So anyway, my point is I'm very confident with the blue ones. Never had a problem, never seen anything unusual. Um, so if you stick with blue, you'll be good. Okay, so here we go. So that is ready to go ahead and paint our flowers and the fish scales. So it looks like this piece, other than I actually wiped out the lines there. So we completed this. This is the plate preparation. And that is all done, ready to go. So let me go back to this plate. You can see I've got the preparation already done right here, ready to go. And this is where I'll actually get into um, the next step of our four-step process. Step one was doing the preparation of the guidelines, which I just showed you. Now we're going to go ahead and start the pen work.
and actually do the fish scales themselves now and back out. So here are the supplies that we need to do the pen work. We need the pen oil. There we go. We need pen oil. We need our pen, the paint, a tile for mixing. And um, that is really it. We need a spatula for the mixing. Uh, that's all we really need to actually do the pen work. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mix some of the paint with using the pen oil. Um, I don't have a particular brand of pen oil that I would recommend. There's a lot of suppliers out there that do the pen nibs and pen work. I do recommend you use a small nib, fine tip. As far as the pens go, you can see Capanna Art Company, Dallas carries them, DBA Originals, Kugemeyers, they all have them. Pen oil, uh, besides those folks, Maryland China, a painter's collection. Uh, so there's a lot of places that you can uh, get what you need to do the actual pen work. Okay, so we, you always want to mix your pen, uh, your, your paints for using with pen work, you always want to mix the paint powder directly with the pen oil. Don't use your pre-mixed uh, paint off your palette that's already got some oils in it. Uh, it doesn't um, doesn't blend well necessarily with the pen oil. Pen oil and powder directly is the best way. What it does is it it will bleed, kind of bleeds like it oozes. You don't want that. Okay, we're going to mix this to a consistency that's equivalent to ink. Um, it needs to flow off the pen, so it has to be pretty liquid. You don't want to go too liquid, though, to where it would bleed or run when you actually do your fish scales. So I will show you how, how we want to do that. So let's get it all the dry paint pulled together here. Okay, need some more. So this is still on the thick side, too thick. Let me zoom in so you can see it a little closer. Now this is getting a lot better. You can see when I pull it together, it, it, it moves on the plate all on its own. You want that, that's getting to the right consistency and it drips off the palette knife. So that looks pretty good. That looks like where we wanna be. Okay, when you use your pen, all the pens, this type with the, the different size nibs, obviously this is a fine tip. They have a hole in the nib itself you don't want to fill that hole with the paint. If you fill that hole, it won't flow. So you do want to scoop it. I'm turning it upside down, scooping it, but I'm not filling the, the hole. And I usually prime it, get it to start flowing. And it looks like it's ready to go. Okay. Okay, so we're ready to paint. And I'm going to start with the fish scales that are furthest in. I want this first row in here. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I won't be getting my hand in it. If I try to do it this way, it's an odd angle on your wrist. This is a much more natural angle. Plus, I my hand's out here beyond the other rows. And as I paint, I'm going to be coming in this direction, and I won't be getting my hand in it. 
So that's one thing to always think about the design that you're doing, what's the best way to approach it. So I want to put six fish scales in each section. I'm going to make them as high as the row shows here, and I'm going to get six of them from this line to that line. So I will eyeball kind of where the center of that, and that says I need to do three of them from here to that center. Okay, so now I need three more to finish it off. And you can see I'm always moving my plate towards me. I wanna be straight on. If I start leaving it over here and doing it here, you're gonna start leaning them. You'll get them straight up and down if you keep moving your plate. So again, here's halfway roughly. So I'm gonna go one. And when you use your pen, if you're having problems with it flow, flowing, first of all, make sure your mix is correct. Second, you really don't wanna give it a lot of pressure. If I press too hard, it, it separates the tip to where it won't flow. And then the other part of it is how fast you do it. So it's really the mix, the pressure, and how fast is all important aspects to get it to flow correctly. Now, another point that I want to make in making these scallops, if you notice, there's a little bit of a gap between them. And what I mean by that is I'm doing it this way where I have a space, this space right here, like that. What you don't want to do, don't do this. Because you'll see in the pattern that we're doing, this will not work. You need this space between them. So keep that in mind, it's important. Okay, so let me make sure you can see this well. I'll zoom in a little bit more. And I'll do the last one over here now. So it's about halfway. So let's go. So I would continue this with all of the rows first. Um, now, the second row, I'm not going to do the whole thing because uh, I think you'll get the idea of what we're doing in the demo here, uh, but I'll do maybe half of it. Now, this next row, I'm going to start in the center of the prior scallop below it, fish scale. Still using the width of the, the row that I made here, but I'm, it's kind of like laying bricks. going to the top of each one. And you'd keep going. And for this one, same thing. I don't need to count them anymore or you know, try to space them because it's been defined by the row prior to it. It was just that first one that was real important to get the six even ones within this first section. Uh, so this one has one right here. And this particular design would have one coming off partially. Same with here, same with here. Okay, so let's keep going. And we'd have this last row up here. So hopefully you've kind of got the idea how it goes.
et cetera. So I'd keep going on those rows. There is one more step to this. And that's a little teardrop that goes, and this is part of the pattern of a fish scale. And that teardrop goes in between each one of these. This is where you need to have that gap between the different fish scales so that now I can come in and put that little teardrop in there. And it goes about a third of the way of the height of the robe above it. So in other words, it's one third from here to the top of that. It's one third of this space is what I'm saying. And it's filled in. And you do this throughout the whole pattern. I won't do the whole thing. I just want to give you the idea of what it is. Let me see how it shapes up. So you keep going. That, that shows you the, the um, finished pattern of what you would do with the pen work. I would continue that with everything uh, through this whole section and it would look like this. That would be a completed section where we've got all of the fish scales and the teardrops inside of them. And that would be your first fire. I fire everything at 016. Uh, the same, same as what you would fire your, your flowers that you're painting. And you can paint these flowers. You can do them totally at the beginning and then do your fish scales. You can paint them as you're doing the fish scales. This one doesn't have as much of a fire. I think this is only a first fire. This has a second fire. I was painting them as I was doing the fish scales. Okay, so this is the guideline was the first step of the process. The second step was doing the pen work. The third step we're going to do this where we're adding a little bit of um, shadow, a little arch in there in the design. And with that, we do it with just our regular paints, regular supplies, however, whatever mediums you use to paint with is perfectly fine. Uh, it's just our regular supplies are, you know, our, my medium that I use for my painting. Here's my medium. This is paint directly off of my palette. Put our medium in the dish here. And then I always paint on the blotting pile. And then the brushes. So I'm going to, for this part of it, really only need this brush, which is around number five. Um, I have a wipeout tool as well, if needed, just to clean up if you don't get a, a good uh, a shading on it. If you want to adjust, you know, where the paint went, you just do the wipeout for cleanup. But all we're going to do now, and then demonstrate it on what we would have fired here, is to provide a little bit of another layer of color all still within the same blue color. This is all the same paint. You don't change the actual color. But we add a little arch to it, or a little shadow to it. I want to make sure I don't get my hand in it over here. OK, so I'll show it up here. Let me, OK. So press, pull, press, pull. Get a little more paint. It's just giving it a little bit of a shadow behind that teardrop. 
and it's about a third. So I've got a third of the teardrop, a third of this, and then the very top is just left white for the step. So push, pull. You push, it gives you the, the little halo over it. I call it a little arch. If you need to do it in two steps, you know, paint one side, then the other. You can do that. Whatever gives you the, the nice curved arch over it. Okay. So just we do that all the way around there. We do it on the next row. You just do this now on all of the scallops, each individual one. Let me zoom in to make sure that's showing. And I go right over the teardrop. Okay, so just to show you a little bit more. Let me get it on the screen here. Okay, so this, you would do this all the way around the fish scales and you would fire that and that would give you this result right here. So that has the added little shadow around those teardrops. So this gets you to the third step of the four step process. So that's the paint. And the last step is just putting a wash over it. So I'm gonna show that on this one, it would be fired as you're seeing here. And it's using your same paint, regular um, paints that you would use for um, mediums and, and, and um, oils and stuff for painting. I'm using a number eight square shader and literally just using that same paint and we're just literally doing a wash right over that. It's covering the white porcelain is what we're, we're doing. You wanna get it nice and even. on the ones here at the top. Okay, there we go. And that's it. And you would go ahead and fire that, all the fires at 016, and that would complete the fish scales. So if you can see it zoomed in, it would give you this kind of result. Here it is done on this piece. So you can see there's no white porcelain. It's all been covered with that last final wash that was done. And um, the, the steps of the um, fish scales themselves, again, is get your guidelines in, do the arches, the actual scallops, the teardrops in them with the pen, come back with your brush and do the second arch that's in there. And then the last one is just a wash. So they really, it's not complicated um, as long as you break it down into steps. That, that's what's important that, that makes it easy for you. So that concludes the, um, the how-to, how to make the fish scales. And what I want to leave you with is a little bit of inspiration, some further inspiration perhaps. Hopefully I've given you enough information that you can go do fish scales. And um, I wanted to show you a couple more examples. As I had mentioned briefly, I had the opportunity to go on a porcelain tour to Germany. So I um, toured the Meissen factory, actually painted at the Dresden factory and at the Kugemeyers, but uh, had a very nice tour of the Meissen factory, had beautiful porcelain there. 
you know, it was just, uh, it was like a kid in a candy store. It's beautiful. This was one of the pieces that I took a picture of and I really liked it. Of course, it had the fish scales and this was a, a use of the fish scales where it's not real obvious. Like mine, the, the fish scales are part of the design. They're intended to be very visible. Here, it's more of an accent. Beautifully done. You can see the the detail that they have. So, okay, so I saw that, oh, it's beautiful. Wouldn't that be nice to just do a whole place setting? Well, sure enough, isn't that pretty? They did a whole place setting on it. And you can see how it just embellishes it. And you can see because it's out on the outer rim, each of the layers, but you've got your dinner plate, your salad plate, uh, looks like a little dessert or soup. And anyway, nice total place setting. If you're so inclined, if you want to do the serving pieces and then you say, well, I would love to have a place setting. Hey, you got to do one for a few of your friends as well. So here we go. A whole table. I came around the corner and I saw this entire table. It must seat 20 people. <laughs> so if you're real inclined to do a lot, go for it. There you go. I encourage you. I think you'd have a blast doing it and your family would enjoy it, that's for sure. So again, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the opportunity and hopefully you've learned how to do the fish scales and, and I encourage you to try some on your own, try some different colors, do it on different pieces of uh, porcelain and uh, just have fun. So thanks again. If anyone would like to ask Roberta some questions, um, I suggest you unmute yourself and ask for your question now. Anybody have a question? Yeah. Roberta, how would you line, like um, you did a vase, how, how, how do you put the lines on a vase? So yeah, that was um, a little more difficult. It's a good question because it's not as obvious. And on that one, the banding wheel works for the horizontal lines very well, because you just can go up the neck of the vase um, and, Instead of it being down on a plate, your hands up higher and you're just getting the lines and spinning it. And you can do the vertical or the horizontal ones very easily, as I've shown you here. The vertical ones are the challenging ones. And what I did for that vase, I actually made a plumb line. I took a string on the top and hung with a weight on it. So it hung straight. And from that, I could see where it was touching that design on the bottom. So that's one way. I think that was the hard way. <laughs> but it worked. Um, the other way is to use a laser liner. It works fabulous. It's amazing because it, you know how the construction people will use a laser liner to get a, a, a wall straight, you know, find, um, get the studs straight, that sort of thing. Or if you want to hang a picture, they advertise them on TV. You have a laser liner. If you put that on the base, on the line, using your uh, plate divider so you know you're getting a you know spaced equally it will shine a straight line right up that vase right up the neck of the vase and from that you can draw your line as well that's another whole demo <laughs> <laughs> but that tool it's amazing I have used it not for fish scales necessarily but for other things for other designs that you need a vertical line going up a vase um, that liner um, uh, laser liner works really well. So good question. It that's, was challenging. That sounds great. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This was excellent, Roberta. I really enjoyed it. Well, thank you. I hope um, it helps you to break down the what looks like maybe a difficult process into something pretty simple. Yes. It thank was you. wonderful. Learned a lot. Okay, thank you. Yes, Roberta, thank you so much. It was a fabulous demo <clears throat> and we are all gonna enjoy reviewing it again on the uh, IPAT Museum YouTube channel and also accessible on the IPAT webpage. And it comes under Zoom lessons and it will be uploaded this afternoon. So thank you again so much. It was a beautiful presentation. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Suzanne.